Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here inside the Think Forum at IBM Think 2025 in Boston. I'm with Hema Wahan, you are uh, one of the Global Alliance leaders for AWS. I'm assuming in charge of the IBM relationship. I am, yes, globally. Yeah. And now uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the AWS IBM relationship. Uh, obviously, let's talk about the, the show first, though. And, uh, you know, a, a big theme at this event was Agentic AI. Mm. Uh, I think IBM announced a whole bunch of agents. Yeah. Um, and it, it's interesting because it's a topic that comes up a lot yeah. when I talk to enterprise customers. But a lot of them aren't really sure. Everybody wants them, not sure what to do with them. And so from your perspective, you talk to a lot of customers. Um, where are their heads at? What are they thinking about? I think the momentum is how do we get AI to work for you, right? And that is really the theme with agentic AI. Yeah. Enterprises have a ton of knowledge, a ton of customer data, you know, a ton of information around what they want, you know, um, their, their AI to do for them. And I think agentic AI is a direction where, you know, now AI is able to take some action or do some tasks on your behalf. That's where we are seeing, you know, this is heading towards. Yeah, and uh, so what? what's the low hanging fruit task, you think? Customer experience, I think, is one. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and then I've talked to Connect team a lot. Oh, is that right? right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think on services, customer services yeah. is like you know pretty low hanging fruit. You know, it's because everybody does it terrible, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> except Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're seeing it all on sales also, right? Uh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of uh, work that goes into updating Salesforce records, for example, right? You've you've had a sales call, you have notes around a customer opportunity, you want to take action within that Salesforce record, you want to figure out when the next follow up is, or you know whether I should be not touching this customer again. You know, agent is able to figure that out for you. So it takes so that you know repetitive mundane task away from the seller and they are just focused on strategic selling versus some of this record keeping so to speak is yeah. happening through the agents. Now IBM and uh, AWS have had a long relationship yeah. uh, and we're going to talk about a few of the announcements here but just tell me about the partnership and how that's been going and, Super and, the, exciting. and yeah. the value of the customers. Yeah no absolutely it was, I think uh, you know we've had a part, we've, we've been a partner with IBM for a number of years now. I think specifically on the software side of the house our partnership kicked into high gear in 2022. We announced a strategic collaboration agreement with IBM and as part of the agreement we both decided to make investments in bringing almost all of IBM's software portfolio on AWS as SaaS and on AWS marketplace. And the core tenant is, you know, we want to offer customer the ease of use, right? Yeah. So deployment and then choice, you know. So now we have over 80 listings on the AWS marketplace. The software is available in close to 90 countries globally. Um, we've seen tremendous growth in terms of what we are doing together for our customers. Yeah, well, I would get that there's massive overlap between yeah. the AWS customer base and the IBM customer base. Uh, you know, one of the data points from my research is that um, uh, the majority of companies, I think over 90% said that obviously technology is more important to business operations of two years ago, but 80% also said it's more complex. Yeah. And so you've got these, uh, you know, kind of diverging forces, more important, more complex, and it seems partnerships like what you have with IBM can help simplify those yeah, things. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think one of the missions for our partnership also was how do we make these products purpose-built for AWS? You know, so a, a, a good example of this is Amazon RDS for DB2, for example. You know, if you have existing IBM customers who are using DB2, for example, on-premises today, and they want to easily move those DB2 workloads into the cloud, and so we offer DB2 RDS as a commercial engine um, for DB2, and that has allowed customers like Profiles and Tivo to move their DB2 install base from where they were over to RDS in 15 days. It's unheard of. It's, yes, it's a yeah. stuff that takes months. But given that, so again, it kind of goes back here. We want to offer our customers the uh, the option of utilizing IBM technology in the most efficient way possible. On yeah. Now at the show, you had uh, three main announcements. Uh, so let's go through. The first one was around uh, Agentic AI, yeah. right, and a partnership there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Super excited about this partnership. As part of this announcement, Watson Orchestrate is going to integrate with Amazon Q Index. Um, and Amazon yeah. Q Index, you know, sources uh, index data from our customers from across 40 different ISVs. So think about you as a Watson Orchestrate customer building agents yourself. Now you have contextual data across those 40 ISV properties for that customer. So Watson Orchestrate is able to take actions based on that contextual data. Um, it's just great value for, yeah. for, for customers using Watson Orchestrate and Amazon Q index. Yeah, and, and again, I would guess the overlap of that is pretty big, pretty right? Big. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I will say there's, that to me is an important announcement because 
in this world where everyone's building an agent to do everything, and then, you know, like I said, IBM announced about 150 of them, something's got enabled them to talk to each other. Exactly. Right? You're and, spot on. Yeah. You're spot because, on. because there's no process that's going to use one agent. You're spot on. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that, you know, it, it kind of uh, extends to data as well. Yeah. Uh, you cannot imagine our customers to sit and develop data connectors into each of these ISV properties yeah. individually. So Q index, you know, it kind of abstracts some of that complexity yes. out. So now our customers are busy building agents and, you know, they're getting the right contextual data coming through Amazon Q-Index versus spending time developing connectors into individual ISPs. Yeah, yeah. so Q-Index and, uh, uh, and orchestrate better together. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And also there was an uh, Amazon, uh, there was an IBM Granite 3.1 announcement, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah 3.2 actually. Oh, we, 3.2, announced, yeah, that's right. we announced uh, Granite 3.0 last year. Um, it was available and it is available on Amazon Bedrock. Uh, both on the Bedrock stores and as a custom model import. This year, we have announced uh, Bedrock 3.2, uh, sorry, Granite 3.2 and Amazon Bedrock um, on the Bedrock stores. Uh, you know, 3.2 has an upgrade from 3.2 in terms of its reasoning capability. So I think, I hope our customers are going to enjoy using Granite models and build their Gen AI applications yeah. using Bedrock. And what I really like about Granite though, is, uh, uh, you know, Amazon could have gone down the path of we're going to build all our own models and we're going to insist customers use them, but Let's be real. <laughs> models change all the time. Sometimes your models are the best, sometimes they're not. Yes. And so this yes. allows gets give customers choice. Right? Again, this goes back, yeah, it's like you pointed out, tenant of choice. Um, yeah. You know, we are still investing. Uh, you may have heard we announced uh, Amazon Nova models, right? Yes, our, yeah, our, yeah, at the reInvent. At, yeah, at reInvent. So, you know, we're just adding more harmony, you know, for our customers so that they can pick and choose whatever LLMs they want to the kind of Gen AI applications they are building, right? Some models yeah. are good at something, others are not so much. So, yeah. it's a lot of customer choice. And the third announcement was a marketplace momentum announcement. Amazon, yeah. uh, IBM's been a, a reseller on the marketplace now for a while. It's tremendous growth. Yeah. Zoos, we're so happy. Um, and I think this announcement is just, again, you know, getting what our customers are asking for. A lot of customers, you know, in, in countries like Indonesia, for example, they want to make sure that their data sits in those regions as opposed to somewhere else. And so what we are doing now is we are opening up additional regions for all these ad, IBM SaaS properties that are running on AWS today. They are going to be available in, across uh, multiple regions in APAC. And uh, we can be more excited about that announcement. Yeah. And uh, I want to ask you about one other thing. You know, when I when you ask customers what holds them back from AI, data management is one of them. You talked about that. But the other is security. Is there uh, an, an AWS plus IBM story that makes the environment more secure? Yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah. You know, last year we announced an integration between Amazon SageMaker and WatsonX.Governance. Governance. Our customers were coming to us and said, hey, you know, we are building these models, we are training these models. How do we make sure that these models actually adhere to my corporate policies and guardrails and governance rules? And that's our answer. So, you know, we are offering that tooling or that integration for comprehensive model management so that when you are building models or anyone else in your organization is building models, they're adhering to those policies, those values, and those guardrails yeah. so that things don't go off. Yeah, and I'm glad you're actually actively involved in the guardrails because I, I really, the more I think about this, it's not up to the model providers to build the guardrails. Yes, absolutely. Right, and and it really shouldn't be because different companies have different levels of tolerance. Uh, yep. The guardrails that a financial firm or a healthcare firm be much different than what a consumer company you would right. be, right? Absolutely. So, so you can let them set the guardrails and then whatever model they bring in is set. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. integration, you know, um, basically offers our customers both those things. You, you they offers model management yeah. and then ways to remediate if there are any problems. So, uh, All right. you know. That's our answer to yeah, making yeah. sure that AI is trustworthy and deployed in a, you know, uh, compliant manner. All right, how about without getting yourself into any safe harbor pro troubles, uh, <laughs> w what lies ahead for the two, for you and IBM? We'll continue to work on making sure that IBM technology is available in the most frictionless possible to our end customers. That has been the tenor of this partnership. How do we make lives easier? Because to, to your point, a lot of our customers, uh, AWS customers are also IBM customers, yeah. and they want us to work together. Um, and that's really the path forward. I think we're going to see a lot of action on agentic AI. Of course, we're excited about this coming announcement. Yeah. And uh, we have just know. we have just begun to agentic. Yes, I think. Yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's coming. So it's coming. Yeah. All right. And last question, just some advice to the audience. If they're thinking about moving forward to the agentic, how should they proceed? Wow, that's a great question. Besides use AWS and IBM. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think, uh, you know, Watson Oshkoshay is available on the AWS marketplace. I would highly recommend customers to go, you know, download um, and start building uh, agents on their own. There are pre-built agents in the software yeah. that they can utilize. Uh, Bedrock is also a great place to start building your own agents. I would highly recommend to customers to look at their internal knowledge base because the agent needs to learn what your processes are in order to do something that you want the agent to do. Yeah. And the only way you do that is kind of, uh, you know, tap into that enormous amount of data that you got today, your knowledge base, expose it to the agent, let the agent do its job so that you can focus on what's more strategic for you. Yeah, and how do you feel about, uh, one last question. Yes, so absolutely, like, yeah. please. Uh, about Arvind's, uh, the IBM CEO's key um, uh, comment that the future really for enterprise is small models, not large models. Yeah, I think uh, it ties back to Arvind's take, you know, on what he's talking about granite, yeah. right? And that, you know, Gen AI applications are going to be purpose-built, they're going to be solving a specific use case. Yeah. And so uh, you may not need a large language model to, you know, build something that's very industry-specific or use case-specific. Yeah. And that's why he's kind of leaning in and talking about small language models, which is interesting. And I think granite offers that. on that It topic. assumes that there's a small model built for that purpose use yes, case. Yes, exactly. Right, and exactly. so I think if IBM is going to go down the path that's incumbent upon them to build, the models for those use cases. Otherwise, you're defaulting to a large language model. Absolutely. But I do know if there is a small model, the cost of running it is dramatically different than, Absolutely. than using Absolutely. large ones. Yeah. Absolutely. And, so, and same goes with training those small language yeah. models. If you have to fine tune them, same goes with it. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else you want to add? That's it. Thank you for having me. All right. Me. No, this thank you. Exciting. So, on behalf of Hamet Mohad from AWS, from IBM Think 2025, I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Richardson. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast. Thanks, man.